Bob Menendez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Secretary, thank you for coming to the committee um, again and agreeing to two rounds of questions so we can discuss the budget, the administration's views on a new proposed AUMF and other pressing issues. As you know, I strongly believe that uh, frequent, open, and frank exchanges are critical for this body to conduct effective oversight and for informing the American people. And to that end, I appreciate our call of uh, last week. Let me depart for a moment because uh, since we started this hearing with current events, let me just remark on them uh, briefly. Uh, the art of diplomacy is a lot harder than the art of the deal. Uh, the reality is, is that it's pretty uh, amazing that the administration might be shocked that North Korea is acting as North Korea might very well normally act. And while we applaud the robust diplomatic efforts to try to denuclearize the Korean Peninsula, many of us were deeply concerned that the lack of deep preparation that is necessary before such a summit is even agreed to uh, was not taking place. And uh, now we see the consequences of that. And I'm not sure that constantly quoting the Libya model is the diplomatic way to try to get to the results that we seek in North Korea because that didn't work out too well for Gaddafi. So uh, I, I look forward to having an opportunity, I'm sure other members will as well, to discuss that further. I was pleased to hear, Mr. Secretary, that a recent town hall at the State Department, you said that we are, for, quote, we are fortunate that our president values and understands the power of diplomacy and knows that we must use every tool in the diplomatic toolkit. So surely, Mr. Secretary, I, I'm sure you can't be here to actually defend this budget, which runs completely counter to that very assertion, runs counter to the very goals and ideals that you championed in your confirmation hearing and those that the administration defined in its own national security strategy robust diplomatic engagement, maintaining our position of global leadership, and the President's ambiguously defined political goal of putting America first. The budget that President Trump presented for promoting the foreign policy interests of the United States is instead stunningly irresponsible. In my view, it undermines our abilities to promote American foreign policy, it betrays our values, and it makes our citizens in the world less safe. Far from America first, it would leave America isolated and behind. I'm sure I don't need to tell you that you have inherited a department with a prevailing sense of plummeting morale, a core hollowed out of senior career diplomats whose expertise cannot be replaced overnight, one career ambassador left. So I completely support your efforts and will be a willing partner to fully staff the department with qualified, appropriate nominees. However, as we discussed, Mr. Secretary, some of the nominees who have been put forward are themselves the cause of delays. We have a responsible, transparent vetting process. Some of these nominees have failed to disclose not just uh, campaign donations or organizational affiliations, but some have failed to disclose significant lawsuits of which they have been the subject. It's extremely important that every nominee be completely honest and straightforward with the committee. And with a significant number so far, this simply has not been the case. So I commend the initial steps you have taken to lift the hiring freeze and open positions to eligible family members, but I understand that some bureaus are still not hiring, and without a successfully operational agency, I don't know that we can possibly successfully promote our national security interests on behalf of all Americans. But we also cannot hope to secure our interests when our senior administration officials contradict one another in public, act impulsively, and offer more support to our adversaries than our allies. Senior members of the intelligence community, which, were, uh, which included you until recently, continue to point to incontrovertible proof of Russia's interference in our 2016 elections. Yet the President refuses to even acknowledge their attack on our democracy. And the budget request includes a 63 percent decrease in funding to counter Russian aggression. The administration's national security strategy talks about the challenge of a revisionist China. Yet the President charges the United States Department of Commerce with saving Chinese jobs, while the budget request decreases funding for promoting American interests and alliances in East Asia and the Pacific by nearly 50 percent. In the Middle East, even as Iran's proxy fighters inch ever closer to the Israeli border from Syria and Lebanon, the budget proposes massive cuts for critical assistance throughout the region. And in the Western Hemisphere, while the President says combating drug trafficking and confronting the opioid epidemic are priorities, we have a derogatory, uh, hateful, and racist set of tweets, 
and confounding reports that your predecessor ignored warnings that rescinding TPS designations would leave the United States and our citizens more at risk, while the budget proposes cutting critical funding to Mexico and to counter narcotic and law enforcement operations. And let me just say, the administration takes alarming steps to erase the importance of core American values, not, in, not only in terms of what they're asking for in this budget or not asking for, but literally erasing the words. These values, democracy, governance, labor, and human rights. And so, Mr. Secretary, as we've discussed, these are not merely ideals. They are critical enablers for our foreign policy success. Let me just close. I do hope to hear from you on the AUMF. Uh, I understand that the administration believes it has all the authorities it needs. But since uh, the chairman uh, and other distinguished members of the committee are moving forward, on an AUMF, and there is a proposed AUMF, the Corker Kane AUMF. I would like to hear the administration's uh, views on that AUMF as part of your presentation. We look forward to your remarks, and uh, uh, thank you again for joining us. Mr. Secretary, again.